Thank you all for coming to this session. Um, and we will dig deeper into uh, traffic V3. Yes, it's working apparently. <laughs> um, so yeah, we will dig deeper into uh, the brand new traffic V3 uh, version that has just been released uh, earlier this year. Um, but let's start by uh, quickly introduce myself. I'm Emil Vosges, um, the creator of traffic and uh, the uh, uh, CTO uh, and founder of Traffic Labs, the uh, company uh, behind the project. Um, I'm French, uh, you might already know with my accent. <laughs> I live in uh, Grenoble, uh, right into uh, the, the Alps, uh, which allowed me to, uh, uh, to do some kind of mountaineering on my free time. Um, all right, let's get back to uh, uh, a quick intro and see about the history of the project. And let's get, let's get back to uh, 2015, already nine years old. <laughs> um, and I used to be at the time um, um, a developer full-time working on microservices platform. And if you remember in 2015, um, uh, building a microservices platform was kind of a mess. Uh, the ecosystem was really poor and everything was just starting at that time, right? It was really early. So yes, uh, Docker was starting, but there was no Kubernetes. Uh, uh, we used to, uh, to, to have Marathon at that time uh, with Mesos, et cetera, et cetera. So it was really starting, okay? And I had to uh, expose uh, thousands of microservices on the internet, which implied to do it uh, automatically, right? You can't do it manually at that, I mean, at, at that stage. Um, and nothing was uh, existing to uh, automatically expose microservices. So I started to build my own stuff um, on my free time and um, uh, started uh, uh, to uh, create a new project. Uh, and oh, I don't know what's going on. All right. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, wait a second. Magic. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's working again. So yeah, um, started to uh, work on my own project and um, commit the first uh, initial commit on, the, on on GitHub. And um, here we are. Um, at that time, traffic uh, was born. Uh, it was of course the beginning uh, in 2015. But what I really wanted to build uh, is a reverse proxy from scratch, uh, build for cloud the cloud native world, build for microservices, build for containers, right? That was really the main idea, right? Uh, build something new for the, the modern era. And the idea was, of course, to handle all the traffic management uh, in an automated way uh, with uh, a high security, of course, and, of, and also with the deep integration with uh, all the observability uh, of ecosystem. Uh, so that's really what I had in mind at that time. And what makes uh, traffic special, what makes traffic stand out is, as I said, the deep integration in the cloud native world. So basically any orchestrator uh, you run, your workloads, can be uh, connected to traffic, it can be Kubernetes, it can be Docker, it can be, uh, uh, it could be Mesos, Marathon, uh, it can be Nomad, etc. anything, uh, or even bare metal, <laughs> uh, if, you, if you are kind of an adventurous. Um, it is super lightweight, uh, written in Go, uh, it's uh, self-contained it, into one binary, extremely fast, and I will dig deeper into this later. And it's extremely simple, However, it gives you access to very advanced feature, but the UX, the user experience, stay extremely simple. So that's really the, uh, let's say, the philosophy of the project um, I had in mind. So let's just get back to the timeline. So 2015, first commit, uh, 2016, 17, uh, I founded uh, Traffic Labs, the company. Uh, we released Traffic 1.0, uh, uh, which was called Rob Lochon. Uh, and I'm French, so every release of traffic has a cheese name, and uh, <laughs> that's how it is. So this was a revolution. And, uh, and uh, we also secured uh, a funding round, um, which allowed me to uh, 
uh, higher team uh, and uh, allowed us to uh, have a giant sticker of traffic on the wall of the office, which was pretty amazing. <laughs> and let's uh, move forward to 2019. Uh, we released Traffic 2, uh, which would, was called Mondor. Uh, so it was a big step forward uh, in the project. It came with plugins, it came with a brand new advanced uh, configuration mechanism. Uh, we secured the Series A founding round and we were able to start our uh, commercial product, which is uh, Traffic Hub, which is basically everything around API management and API um, uh, gateways. So if traffic is really uh, centered around um, exposing services and microservices and everything in containers, really Traffic Hub is everything around API, okay? And uh, the beauty of it, what makes it special is that uh, the idea is that we have built a portfolio to start simple, exposing services uh, in a cloud native environment or, or even in a bare metal environment and grew uh, progressively into your API journey. And uh, you start simple with, API, with application proxy, then API gateway, which allows, us, which, allow, which allow you to have advanced authentication mechanism, uh, advanced and authorization, up to the API management, which is the most high level one uh, with high level API governance, uh, deep API observability, uh, developer portal, you know, all these kinds of features that are needed when you have uh, to manage an API fleet. So that's, that's where we're, what we sell uh, at Traffic Labs. And let's get back to the timeline to this year, 2024. And we uh, announced Traffic 3 um, earlier this year which is uh, a huge step forward in the uh, life of the, of the project, Na nine years after <laughs> the first commit, so it's quite, quite, uh, quite a ride. Um, and I just wanted to get back to the uh, crazy numbers of the, this open source project. Uh, more than 3.3 .3 billion downloads, billions, right? Uh, it's pretty amazing. It's in the top 15 most downloaded uh, uh, image on Docker Hub, uh, and so one of the most popular projects on Docker. Uh, we just crossed 50k stars on GitHub, and probably the metrics I love the most is the number of contributors, uh, which to me it's, uh, it's the best <laughs> proxy to how uh, healthy a project is, which means it's not a project built by a company. Right, it's a project built by a community, uh, and uh, and that's the best proxy we can have is the number of contributors, which is still growing uh, crazy fast. So yeah, super active project, uh, super successful project, uh, which is not what I expected when I wrote the first commit. Of course, <laughs> it was just a side project at first, but uh, surprising, you have some good surprise sometime. And now we have um, proxy proxy three, which is really. Um, the main topic of this session, and I will uh, dig deeper into new features. Uh, and as you can see uh, in these high-level features, uh, uh, this is serious, right? We brought WASM support, hotel support, uh, Kubernetes API gateway, uh, etc. So this is pretty. Uh, we, this is a real, a real deal uh, for proxy. Let's start with open telemetry. So if you have been working in the uh, microservices world, in the con container world, you already know that um, observability is probably one of the most important thing uh, to control. <laughs> uh, and the reason is to keep control, right, on your infrastructure, because you deploy uh, thousands, hundreds or thousands of uh, workloads, and you need to know what's going on, right? And if there is an issue, you need to know that there is an issue. And if there is an issue, you need to know how to troubleshoot this issue. And to allow this, uh, there are three main things to implement correctly, which is uh, the most obvious one is logs, right? You all know what is logs. Tracing and metrics. Um, so tracing, um, let's start with this one. This one allows you to keep track of uh, request within um, a workload uh, and keep tracks of every step uh, the request 
uh, is going through during this uh, uh, journey. So this allows you to clearly monitor the performance and find the bottlenecks, right? When, you, when your request uh, goes into your infrastructure and go through like 10 services, uh, it's hard to know what is the bottleneck if you don't have tracing. So tracing is here to, uh, to help you find bottlenecks and basically speed up the response time at the end of the day, right? Um, here is an example of Jaeger. Uh, Jaeger is a, um, uh, a UI to help you uh, visualize the tracing. So if you don't know what a trace is, uh, this is basically how it works. This is one trace and uh, at, at the bottom you have different spans and spans corresponds to the components uh, in which the, tr the requests go through uh, during its journey in your infrastructure. So each, each line is one component. Uh, the request go through and of course the, the bottom line is uh, the uh, application line where the uh, um, uh, request is uh, managed by your application after all the uh, uh, traffic uh, steps. So that's really um, and with that you know uh, which step is the most expensive uh, and this allows you to, uh, to troubleshoot what is going on. Logs of course you will know what logs are uh, monitor your uh, infrastructure, monitor everything on your infrastructure, find the errors, discover errors, of course, this is key, and solve the issues. Um, and the modern way to, uh, <laughs> to manage logs is not to have dozens of uh, files sitting in your infrastructure, which are difficult to, uh, uh, to handle, especially if it's distributed. Uh, the modern way is to centralize everything into one um, place, for example, and, and have Loki, for example, uh, this is one, just one example to visualize things and uh, easily um, uh, find lo your logs, uh, easily group uh, interesting logs together. Uh, so you need something uh, on top of uh, your usual files uh, to, uh, to keep track of everything efficiently. And finally, metrics. Um, of course, I mean, metrics are uh, usually here to monitor uh, your infrastructure and uh, the idea is to control the usage control uh, is if everything is uh, is right on your system in real time uh, so usually you use metric to build dashboard like this one in Grafana uh, which is uh, obvious so you can control uh, the number of uh, response code over time for example in the case of a reverse proxy but you can use this for anything pretty much anything you get the idea <laughs> um, Within traffic, uh, we, I mean, since the beginning of the project, we have been, um, of course, um, deeply integrated traffic to different uh, technologies uh, of observability. And this came to a point where we had like almost a dozen of <laughs> implementation, uh, one for, I mean, several for tracing, several for metrics and logins, etc. And this is quite, I mean, it, 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 it became kind of a mess at some point, and this is why uh, a standard, uh, I mean, standard came to, uh, uh, um, I mean, came to appear. First of all, open tracing, which was a standard to uh, standardize <laughs> the uh, tracing um, uh, API and tracing SDK. Uh, then it, then uh, we saw open census, which was trying to uh, standardize the, uh, uh, the matrix uh, and the logging later. And this finally, uh, ultimately, came up with Open Telemetry, which, we, which is basically a, a grouping of, of this. Uh, so Open Telemetry is here to standardize tracing, logging, and metrics. Uh, so this is great uh, because it's a way to describe and send uh, any uh, observability data to any tool that is uh, compliant with this um, uh, uh, standard. So basically, um, uh, the idea is that in production, uh, you will use what we call a Notel, an open telemetry collector to collect all your data and then to send all this data uh, to your observability tool, which can be anything like Prometheus, Datadog, whatever, uh, what you use. Uh, but the idea is to collect everything with uh, the collector. And with traffic V3, uh, we have been integrating uh, the uh, uh, latest open telemetry uh, version, which means we are now able to uh, handle 
metrics endpoint uh, uh, as an hotel standard. We are able to handle tracing uh, as an hotel standard, uh, which is great. And logging is not here yet. Uh, it is still work in progress. The reason is uh, the Go uh, SDK is not ready yet. It is in beta. Um, uh, and the reason is uh, the uh, latest um, uh, open telemetry um, uh, specification is pretty new. It's pretty uh, recent. So, not the, I mean, the, the ecosystem is not ready entirely yet, right? So, but, uh, but we are closely following, of course, the uh, logging implementation. And as, as soon as it is uh, out of beta, we will integrate it into traffic and we will be able to, uh, to, to, get, um, to get this done. Uh, but of course, we can still export logs as usual. I mean, as we are all used to do uh, uh, logging. Uh, until until then, all right. So open telemetry, uh, it's a big thing uh, in the uh, uh, microservices world, uh, and it's a big step forward in my opinion. We really needed it that uh, to avoid uh, dozens of implementation of uh, observability uh, tooling. So this is really something you need to keep in mind if you want to uh, uh, build something from scratch. Uh, open tele open telemetry is clearly the future, uh, and uh, and it's here to stay. Gateway API, another um, big step forward <laughs> in the in the uh, cloud native world. So yeah, if you are not familiar with the uh, Kubernetes world, um, how to expose um, services within Kubernetes? Uh, we it, it started with what we call ingress resources uh, back in 2015. So at the very beginning of Kubernetes. Uh, uh, and until recently, we used ingress to expose. Uh, that was the default way to expose uh, uh, resources on the internet. And traffic, um, I mean, is and has always been an ingress controller. So implemented this uh, specification, uh, 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 I mean, um, from the beginning. So the good thing with ingress is that it's simple. The bad thing is all the rest. <laughs> it, it, is, uh, <laughs> it is so simple that you pretty much can do, cannot do anything but just exposed, uh, expose uh, an API. But as soon as you want to add some uh, security uh, mechanism on top of that, like uh, uh, advanced uh, stuff, uh, it's, you cannot do it simply. Uh, so you, I mean, pretty quickly you end up to, to be uh, uh, using annotation, uh, which are very specific to vendors, very specific to each uh, controllers. Uh, and uh, this makes the initial vendor neutral uh, uh, thing uh, impossible, okay? Uh, and of course, it's only uh, focusing on HTTP, which is okay, but not sufficient because many uh, services are using TCP or UDP, um, and it has been deprecated, okay? As there was no new um, um, uh, I mean, st standard in Cube, we've built uh, the ingress route uh, uh, in 2019 with traffic two. So this, this is specific to traffic, all right? We wanted something to, uh, to avoid the mess of uh, uh, the annotation hell of uh, uh, ingress. Uh, so we proposed that, um, uh, and this allowed us to have HTTP, TCP, UDP, uh, middlewares, uh, which means filters uh, in the pipeline, uh, configuration using uh, uh, structure and not annotation. So this was great, but only for us, only for traffic. Uh, so it's not ideal. <laughs> um, and finally, uh, Gateway API tried to solve this issue. Uh, and this is uh, um, a project that started in 2019. So it's, uh, it's already uh, quite some old, uh, but ended up being uh, production ready last year already. I mean, uh, only, so it took, it took a while. Uh, five years to uh, to finish. It is a basically ingress v2. Okay, so trying to solve all the issue uh, that we were seeing in ingress, uh, but it, keeping I mean with a standard uh, API. So it works with HTTP, TCP, UDP is in the pipeline. Uh, configuration using objects and not annotation, uh, and basically it's it's clearly the next standard. So same thing. If you are working on something new uh, uh, in building a new microservices platform, please consider Gateway API. It is clearly a 
something you sh cannot ignore today uh, and uh, avoid starting with ingress today uh, because um, gateway API is already, uh, um, I mean, production ready and pretty much advanced, okay? So in two words, uh, in short, one of the also benefits of uh, gateway API is that uh, this specification uh, address two persona, ops and developers, okay? Because uh, you have different persona uh, working on the, on the Kubernetes platform, okay? And ops will deal with uh, the two object gateway class and gateway, and gateway class is basically defining the gateway controller, uh, which is used in your Kubernetes uh, uh, cluster, so for example, traffic. And uh, gateway class is basically like um, your entry point, so the port uh, of your ingress controller that will be listening uh, uh, for ingress, ingress request. Okay, so that's what is defined by uh, ops. There are much more than that. You can uh, uh, you can uh, uh, predefine HTTP root uh, uh, constraint uh, when you are ops, etc. But I won't. Uh, I will stay high level to keep it simple. And developer on the other end. They just want to expose their application, okay? They don't want to mess up with the uh, port, etc. They just want to expose their application, and they can deal with just HTTP root, TLS root, uh, and, and those objects. And uh, basically, an HTTP root with, will reference the gateway defined by the ops, and define the ops names, uh, the rule, the matchers, the filters. We will dig deep, deeper into that in a minute. That's just uh, the idea how to split between different persona, uh, the different resources. And it, it, it's really a, uh, a great thing to be able to do that because with, again, with Ingress, it was all in one place and it was a mess. <laughs> so to give you an idea between, with the difference between Ingress and a gateway API, on the left you have Ingresses and for example on the left, um, uh, so this was an Ingress, a typical Ingress defined with traffic uh, so the blue lines are the annotations. So you can ha you could have dozens of them, right, to define specific uh, uh, specific um, behavior. Uh, so the annotations here are defined to uh, uh, I, I used to define the uh, the entry point, so the listener, and we also use the annotation to uh, define specific middlewares or filters. Uh, so those are um, typically. Uh, something to add a header, for example, or, uh, or to, uh, to um, uh, allow some IPs, only some IPs on the, on, on, on the specific uh, uh, router. So that's what we have on the left. And uh, on the right, you have the gateway API style. So no more annotation, everything is structured uh, with object, which is way better uh, and way easier. And uh, as you can see, you can also use filters, which are the equivalent of traffic middlewares. So basically, uh, those are custom way to uh, um, customize your incoming request, adding headers, etc. So anything is possible. Uh, but that's the big difference between the two. And and the the, the new one, the Gateway API, is much better, uh, and it's much uh, much more advanced. All right. So that's that's where we are. Um, the current status is that we, with 3.0, we support HTTP and TLS. Uh, we do support the filters uh, with uh, traffic middlewares. And in 3.0, it was sti still experimental, but uh, we released 3.1 <laughs> uh, in uh, July, and, and it's uh, now production ready uh, in traffic. So that's, uh, that's really uh, great. You can use it uh, in production from now. Uh, the Gateway API 1.1 support, so the next version, uh, is right into the corner. Uh, we are about to release th uh, Traffic 3.2, and this will come with uh, uh, Gateway API 1.1 support. Uh, and we are already working on uh, bringing uh, Gateway API 1.2 support. So as you can see, Gateway API is moving fast. <laughs> uh, uh, we had about uh, three uh, versions in uh, less than one year, so it, uh, we need to keep up with that. Uh, but that's really great because they are just uh, bringing new features for every uh, new version. Uh, and it's just great because after almost 10 years of uh, doing nothing on the gate ingress, we, 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 see, uh, we see new features coming to, uh, to this uh, space and that's just great. 
All right. So let's move to uh, the next big thing, WASM. So WASM is a, a, so a, a key thing um, is in Kubernetes and in the cloud native world. But let's get back to uh, first uh, what was the initial issue uh, within traffic. Um, the need to create custom plugins or custom extensions for traffic um, came, up, came up very early. So as we can see on these GitHub issues uh, from 2017, uh, someone is saying, hey, we need some plugins. Uh, maybe you could use some, uh, the Go18 uh, plugin feature. Um, all right, so I mean, we tried um, using the native Go plugin features uh, to bring plugins to traffic, but sadly uh, there were some, I mean, there were many issues and basically the um, plugin feature in Go is, uh, is not used by anyone because it's not finished. <laughs> um, this is sad because uh, it was great, but yeah, it's not working as we want. So quickly we tried to think about technologies that we could use to uh, bring uh, plugins to uh, traffic, and there were many. Uh, but I mean, the technology we wanted to use is basically, the best one was uh, to use a Go interpreter. Uh, that was the best uh, technology we wanted to use. But there was no uh, complete Go interpreter on the market at the time. Uh, so that's why we decided to create our own uh, Go interpreter from scratch. And uh, the idea was that we wanted to have uh, full support of the Go specification uh, with the Go interpreter, which is not easy, as you might guess, right? It's not an easy task. <laughs> um, um, so basically, it's like writing a compiler from scratch. Uh, so it's not easy. Um, but we came up with this um, project, and um, and it and it got a, a great success on GitHub, uh, and it and it is still uh, the most complete interpreter in Go, so in the market, uh, and. Um, We've been uh, integrated uh, Yagi into traffic uh, with uh, traffic 2, uh, and we've been able to uh, uh, create um, a plugin catalog uh, where dozens of plugins have been created by the community uh, so far. So it's, uh, I mean, it was and it is gr a great success, and many people have been using that to create custom plugins in production, so great. The thing is, it's in Go, right? It's a Go interpreter, so you need to be familiar with this language uh, to build plugins uh, with, within traffic, which is okay for many people, but not sufficient for some people. Some people want to be able to uh, create plugins in any language, and that's why um, WASM came lately in the, uh, in the discussion. So for those who don't know, WASM uh, basically, it's a standard uh, which defined um, a portable binary code format uh, that can be executed basically anywhere. Uh, it can be on on the server, on on a browser, on your mobile, on anywhere, uh, and this can be uh, uh, created from anywhere. So that's that's a great uh, promise. Um, um, so basically. It's an open standard, standard. It has been here for quite some time already. Uh, and the great thing is that you can use any language, like uh, C++, Go, Rust, whatever, uh, JavaScript. And in any language, you have an SDK, which allows you to generate uh, a binary uh, in WASM. Uh, so that's, a, uh, that's the beauty. And this binary can be executed anywhere. So that's kind of. Uh, the ideal goal of it, of course, it's super complex, <laughs> uh, but it's but it's great. It's open. Uh, it is fast, and that's another uh, great thing with Wasm. It is more or less the same performance of native uh, um, uh, runtime, uh, so that's great. Uh, faster than container, uh, and it is considered to be uh, one of the next uh, runtime in Kubernetes. To be uh, uh, to be uh, to be honest, if you don't know. Um, and it has many implementation, right? Uh, as I said, uh, that's one of the thing that is great. It's, it's also uh, secure because uh, everything is uh, is run into uh, a VM sandbox, uh, so it's not shared with uh, with the rest of the code. Um, 
And I said that the traffic project was great because uh, it was mostly, uh, I mean, built by the community. And clearly, Wasm is the best example of that because late in the uh, development cycle of traffic uh, three, so late in 2023, late last year, uh, someone in the community came up with, hey, can I, can I work on Wasm integration? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. And, uh, and that was great because uh, a team quickly uh, uh, formed on that uh, with the maintainers. And like within a month, we had Wasm, uh, I mean, up and, and, and running on traffic, so it was pretty amazing. And we also wanted to build uh, one of the best plugin example possible uh, uh, to illustrate how Wasm was, uh, how powerful was Wasm. And we made the decision to create a plugin with, with the help of the community of um, a web application firewall. So basically, you have access to a full web application firewall. Um, I mean, an enterprise grade, a production ready uh, firewall uh, within a Wasm plugin in traffic today, uh, thanks to the uh, Corasa integration. So, Corasa is uh, a, um, a brand new uh, firewall created in Go, uh, it's open source. It is under the OWASP Foundation, uh, uh, which means it's also 100% compatible with the uh, OWASP uh, core rule set. So, that's the, the, the main standard. Uh, uh, here and it's of course uh, compatible with the uh, mod security uh, second language um, and traffic can now uh, um, um, integrate with this uh, firewall so that's pretty uh, pretty amazing um, um, because we are now able to just uh, have um, a, a deeper uh, security uh, inspection into traffic uh, uh, right with uh, Wasm, Wasm plugins. Um, so yeah, Corasa WAF uh, is available in the uh, plugin catalog um, and it's uh, extremely simple to, uh, to, uh, to install just a few, a few lines of code and you are, you are safe. So yeah, I encourage you to, uh, to test it if, uh, if you are interested. Uh, all right. Let's talk about one of the uh, main um, also issue we wanted to solve with this uh, new version, which is ensure we, we have a, a smooth migration path uh, for all users between V2 to V3, right? Uh, because uh, a major release, it's always um, a big challenge to allow users to smoothly migrate. Uh, so we had to uh, uh, we have to ensure that. So basically, this was the philosophy we wanted to follow. It's okay to have breaking changes. I mean, it's a major version, so uh, uh, it's fine. It's okay as soon as they are minimal. And uh, we wanted to have as little uh, breaking changes possible. And two, uh, the main thing is that we wanted to uh, ensure uh, V2 to V3 uh, migration to be progressive, right? We did not want it to enforce users to uh, migrate all their ingresses in once, for example, uh, to be, able to, be uh, able to use V3. Uh, it's, it's okay with the migration path with, we, we have been imagining to, to progressively uh, migrate your ingresses. So it means that you can deploy V3. Uh, it works with V2 ingresses format and you can progressively um, uh, migrate your ingress uh, uh, to the V3 format uh, using v traffic V3, right? So that's great because uh, uh, that's, um, that's uh, way more manageable than uh, 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 migrating everything at once. So the, this is something we wanted to, uh, to ensure the user were safe. Uh, and of course, we've been building a uh, a migration, I mean, a step-by-step -step migration guide to allow you to uh, handle the migration smoothly. Um, I will go quickly on this one because uh, um, um, I want to spend more time on the last thing. Uh, Traffic 3 comes also with spiffy integration, so if you are interested, is interested to have uh, strong identity management in your, uh, uh, in your infrastructure, Thanks to MTLS, Spiffy is the way to go. It's a, an open source standard. 
we have tail scale integration, which is great if you use uh, tail scale as a VPN. It comes with HTTP by default, uh, broadly, uh, and uh, uh, I mean broadly, it's a compression um, uh, mechanism. So this also comes with uh, traffic. All right, one last thing I wanted to, uh, to show you uh, is something regarding performances. So performances is, is a big thing uh, for reverse proxy uh, because, of, I mean, a reverse proxy is always a bottleneck at some point in your infrastructure. Um, so let's do some benchmarking here um, and let's set up uh, uh, an infrastructure uh, to uh, measure the performance of traffic in different use cases. So first of all, let's set up a backend server which runs a web server, okay? Uh, then we will use uh, a gateway server and we will use traffic but also Nginx uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, measure the performance. Let's um, add a benchmark server, so we will use uh, WRK uh, to send dozens and thousands of requests. Uh, and to do that, we will use the latest version of Nginx and traffic v2, v3, and a specific version of traffic, which we, which we call fast HTTP. All right. So I hope this will work, but I will show you a quick demo of it if it works. All right, so let's first um, deploy traffic v2 on the left, and on the right, we send uh, the WRK um, um, benchmark test. Uh, again, it is sending a lot of requests, uh, and we have here uh, 53,000 requests per second, okay? Let's start with traffic three. So we don't have any uh, enhancement, improvement in the uh, performance uh, pipeline uh, in traffic three. So we should see approximately the same thing than traffic two. We have uh, 50K thousand, 54K uh, requests per second. Let's now um, start Nginx. So that's the king. <laughs> the king of performance, I mean. <laughs> um, we should see something significantly better. Uh, Nginx has been uh, here for quite some time. It's in C. It is highly uh, optimized, and we have 66K requests per second. Uh, so that's quite, that's quite a jump compared to traffic. And let's start now the special version of traffic, which has um, a rewrite um, pipeline um, using fast HTTP. And here we have 71K requests per second. So it's better than Nginx. So that's what I wanted to show you. <laughs> Which is great, right? Because Nginx is considered as a kind of a reference uh, in the market here. Uh, so it's, um, it's not just funny, right? It's a big step forward to, uh, to, to have this result. Uh, and yeah, yeah, also. But I, I'm, I'm using, uh, I mean, it will be, uh, I mean, I will talk about the special version of uh, traffic, which should uh, land in traffic v v2 by the end of this month. So by the end of this month, you could be able to, uh, you should be able to use that. So with that, you will have 22% uh, jump between traffic three and Nginx. We have 7% between uh, Nginx and traffic fast HTTP. So fast HTTP uh, is 7% more performant. And it means that traffic, uh, fast HTTP is 30% more performant than the actual version of traffic. So that's quite a big jump. And um, uh, I'm super happy to be able to see uh, this coming uh, probably at the end of this month, uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> um, so this will not be the default uh, reverse proxy pipeline. You will be able to uh, uh, probably to activate it, uh, but it will be uh, uh, um, possible to activate it. Um, and um, and uh, this will lend you to uh, uh, a huge jump in the uh, in the performance. Um, so yeah, pretty uh, pretty happy about that personally. Thank you, folks. This was great. <laughs> <laughs>